Today we're going to visit Alter G. Come on in, let's see what they do. Dick, this is the uh, cockpit that I talked about earlier. It's really the central piece to our uh, anti-gravity treadmills. And what it does is we can bring it up and down in terms of your weight and height. And then uh, all the control panels are set up here. So it's, uh, it's actually the heart of the whole system. The, the original inventor of the technology was actually trying to solve the exact opposite uh, issue that we're addressing here. Uh, in space, astronauts face um, lack of gravity, uh -huh. and what that does over time is creates a problem with bone density loss. I see. So the inventor was actually trying to create an artificial gravity in space to counteract that. Well, it didn't work exactly as planned, um, but uh, there were some practical applications here on Earth. The inventor's son actually took an entrepreneurial class at uh, Stanford. And from that, was able to get a little bit of funding, and we started targeting injured athletes. And uh, one thing led to another. We started getting investment. We started developing the product. And uh, we actually have a very good following in professional athletes, uh, colleges, and a lot of physical therapy offices. The question I think some of our audience wants to know is, did you, did you really always know that this is what you wanted to do for a career? What? No? What did you think you wanted to do? Well, so in high school, I was, um, you know, math and science were definitely my favorite subjects. So going to college, I thought maybe I would do math or physics or something like that. But then in college, once you actually start doing the classes where it's hands-on and you're building stuff and you're prototyping and you're in the machine shop, I love those classes. Um, and so after doing, you know, after trying out a couple of the different engineering subjects and everything, I realized math wasn't for me. I wanted to do something a little more hands-on, a little more practical. How many of you were, you know, when you were younger, were into the Legos or into building things? You know, I, I built. Yeah. I was. Legos, yeah. erector sets, Lincoln yeah. Logs. Blocks. Electronic uh, kits. Yeah. So is it fair to say that you liked working with your hands? Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. building things, right? Yeah. 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 Putting things together. So how did you find Alter G and how did you get connected as an intern? Well. Um, I knew that I wanted to do an internship in robotics because I am in first year of my PhD in robotics, so I needed to, you know, gain some experience in this field and work on some real world projects. So I started searching for all the robotics engineering companies here in Silicon Valley, and I found a list of them, 37 companies in all the Bay Area. I applied to all of them, and many of them, just mm -hmm. like Alter G, didn't have any opening for internship. But I didn't give up, so I just found. Uh, email address of uh, the CTO of the company and uh, actually Cliff, the VP of the company, he's a VP, right? Yeah, VP. Yeah. So I, I emailed him directly and I, I wrote him that I know that you don't have any opening for internship, but I just want to let you know that I'm really interested and if anything comes up, just let me know. And I was lucky he emailed me back and he said that um, we might have one position uh, for you, so they invited me over for an interview and I was lucky to get the job. So I notice you have manufacturing here in the same building, here in California. What do you think about that? Is that good? Does that give, does that give Alter G an advantage? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a problem, you go out in the floor and in five minutes you're, or less, you're talking to the people you need to talk to directly. There's no emails, no phone calls, it's face to face and that's the best way to solve problems. And you also just see them in casual situations. Sometimes you just stop by and chat and you find out problems that may not have actually come to the level of filing a real complaint, but you just understand what's going on and you can make the product better as a result. Yeah, a, a, a tough thing to do as a mechanical engineer is design the part to be manufactured. And if you make a part and it looks great and it works great and you send it off to China, they can probably make it and they'll get it back to you, but it might not you know, fit the right way or it might not be as cheap as it could be. but when it's being made here, you're out on the floor, they tell you, I can't put this part together. And, and you realize, well, I built up the wrong way, I'm gonna you know, change it to make it easier to screw together, make it cheaper, make it faster, and having that quick response is fantastic. Whereas 
in China, they don't necessarily care if they can cut off, you know, you know, two minutes off from making it, but you can make the whole part much cheaper and much quicker. And so, you know, keeping in mind that design for manufacturing is, is, is a very good skill to have, and it's much easier when manufacturing in the same building.